couple of weeks ago I recharged a melon pit out here in the squash patch or the curcubit patch and I failed to mention the place that I figured out about these melon pits is in this book by David the Good compost everything the good guide to extreme composting chapter six is titled composting with melon pits and that's where all the information on these melon pits is in the book you can also find it on his youtube channel but i figured today i would one give credit where it's due and two i want to try to do this by the book because he has a few steps to follow so i'm going to do it as he says in his book might make a few additions just off of experience having done it before but let's get to it today i'm working with two melon pits i've got one right here one over here and the first step on both of these is going to be to dig a two to three foot deep hole because our soil is so shallow here i'll hit sandstone at about two feet so that's already decided for me we're going to dig a two foot hole before i can do that i'm going to clear out the weeds around it and cut up any old vines that haven't been eaten yet and withered back and then we'll dig That took any more than five minutes. Definitely got me winded though. Now I'm gonna start digging. And I'm kind of cheating because I've dug this melon pit before, so the ground is nice and loosened. So it's gonna be a lot easier to dig than it would be otherwise. That's just another benefit to doing this long term. It's a little easier after you do it the first time. I'm down over a foot already. And I'm still finding really nice roots on this melon. There's absolutely no way that these roots could have got down that deep if I hadn't dug this melon pit. I'm sure the fertility helped them have a reason to search down further. The loose soil is the big factor in that river. I can tell I'm getting close to the bottom because I'm finding all the leaves from last year that are left over. Nice and broke down. Looks like there's some kind of insect larva in there. Yeah, I got springtails jumping around in here. I'm gonna assume that that's the eggs. I just saw a springtail jump somewhere in here. But they're doing their job down in there, breaking things down. But we're just about to the bottom. I've got one hole dug down to sandstone i'm finding a lot of leafy material in this one i don't think i fed this one enough but i planned on adding extra this year anyway i have on the ones i've already refurbished or recharged but yeah look at that i'm gonna go right next door here i'm gonna dig this one up I'm gonna dig it off camera. One, to conserve some battery. And two, I wanna to listen to some music or something while I do it. So, let's get that going. I guess we'll be back with it dug right about now. I've got this hole dug down to about two feet. I've actually got some sticks down in there already because step two, is to dump in chunks of wood and sticks. 
put some sticks into both of these. That ought to be plenty enough wood. Probably three or four inches of wood down in there. Since the book says that those are for water retention, I'm going to go ahead and water those in so that they can hold on to a little bit of moisture already without a big rain event coming through. And just as an added precaution, I'm going to go ahead and put some fish emulsion in with them to give them a little kickstart of nitrogen that they need to break down better. I'm just going to use couple tablespoons of this Super Thrive. It's either fish emulsion or fish hydrolysate or something like that. It's really high in nitrogen for an organic liquid fertilizer. And it's got a little bit of phosphorus and potassium. I'm just going to put a couple tablespoons into this two and a half gallon jug. I think I'll put more than that. Maybe a half of a cup. I think it says you can use four tablespoons per gallon, so half of a cup isn't gonna be too much. I think that that's actually a little shy of what I could use. I'm gonna fill that up with water. I'm gonna get that watered in good. Hopefully prime that wood to break down better. I'm back with a full watering pail. I'm just going to try to split this roughly in half between these two. I put in about half. And I can tell it's just going to drain through into the sandstone, so I'm going to put all of this grass these weeds from around the melon pit. And we'll put the other half. Maybe the grass will hold on to at least some of it. This fish emulsion sure bringing in the insects. I don't know what it is that's flying around, but he's sure buzzing loud. He wasn't here till this fish emulsion got opened up. Last addition I'm going to do to step two here, I'm going to put in some wood ash that hasn't been rained on. That'll be a nice source of potassium. Now with my amended step two done, we'll move on to step three, which is dump in dangerous and gross stuff. Last year, I buried a chicken that died on us. I buried all sorts of kitchen scraps and old stuff that we didn't want to even feed our chickens anymore. I buried some raw fish that was freezer burnt really bad. Anything that I could that had a lot of nitrogen content. I'm going to go grab some kitchen scraps, anything that I can find. I'm going to grab some chicken manure from the chicken run and I'm going to grab some scraps from cleaning fish yesterday and we'll get all of them into these holes. I'm back with all of my dangerous and gross stuff to dump into these melon pits. I've got chicken manure and cobs from the run, fish from yesterday whenever we caught and cleaned a bunch of fish. Got all the waste from the fridge, anything that didn't get eaten, some old gravy, <laughs> and I've got about two weeks worth of coffee grounds and filters. I think that's what I'll start out with. I'm going to try to be even between the two. Next ingredient in the stew will be all of our kitchen scraps and fridge waste. Now for the manure and corn cobs. Break this up a little bit. As much fish as I have to put in there, I'm just going to put a 
double hand scoop in each foot. Now we've got our old gravy. I guess I'll report back and we'll see if plants love gravy. I guess I don't have to do that actually because last year I put gravy in too. And our last addition is going to be bags of fish. I knew this is what I was going to be doing today with these fish. So I put them into bags. And I roughly split everything in half. I think this side got a little bit less grass clippings and more wood. So I'm going to put the slightly bigger bag into here. And this bag's probably got another four or five catfish. And that's all of our gross and dangerous stuff, or however old David the Good put it. Now, if I'm not mistaken, the last step is to fill it back in with loose dirt. And that is where I'm going to put one more addition of my own. I'm going to put some compost that really needs used into it. We've got a good tote of compost here. And I think as I go, I should probably water this in because this compost is really dried up. It's been sitting unused for a while. So I'll drag the water hose over here. I'll get this nice and soaked as I bury everything in. I got my water hose. I got plenty of compost. I got one step left after this. So I'm in the home stretch. One thing about these melon pits, especially if you have some hard compacted soil, is they're a lot of hard work. First layer. Be a shovel full of compost. Maybe any uh, active little creatures, bacteria, and fungus that are in there can start breaking things down a little quicker. Although, being this dry, I doubt there's a lot left moving. Then I'll start burying it in with dirt. I get the fish completely covered where I'm not going to get them all over my boots stepping in there. I like to pack everything in just a hair because I know everything's going to shrink a lot whenever the fish and wood and leaves and everything break down. When you're working against compaction, that feels kind of like a backwards thing to do, but you're going to end up with a crater if you don't pack it in a little bit. I'll do a couple shovelfuls of dirt. Shovel full of compost. Shovels full of dirt. Good soaking. This is such a dry soil through here that it really needs as much moisture as you can give it. Depending on what zone map you're looking at, I mean USDA zone 7B or 8A here in Texas. And I get pretty much zero rainfall through the heat of the summer. I have to water every day, and it's really hard to keep up with. If I want to try to get a, another crop of watermelons in, 
before the fall hits us too hard. I'm going to have to soak these well and keep them watered even better than I soak them. But that's the process that I'm going for. I'm just going to add dirt or soil, whatever you want to call it. I call this dirt. <laughs> I think I'd be praising it too highly if I called it soil, but I'm turning it into soil. Here's the reason that I like to lay out a piece of canvas or a tarp or even some cardboard because you can just dump it all mostly back where it needs to be. Last thing I like to do when I'm filling these in kind of create a dam around the edge and make a well in the middle however you want to look at it the better I can get it soaked the less watering I'm gonna to have to do I'll bring you in close for the finishing touch that should be a little bit better of a view. I'll give it one more good soak. I got a pool of water there. That'll help it to soak down nice and deep into that pile. Now there's one last step that you're supposed to do after you get these melon pits built. I would say it's definitely the most important one. After step four, covering with loose soil, you got step five, which is plant and stand back. But I'll plant them tomorrow because the sun's going down and I still got a good bit of watering to do. So I'll be back tomorrow with that. We'll get some dirt under our nails and get some seeds into the soil. I've got my nicely watered in melon pits with a little bit of compost added into the tops. I didn't get a chance to plant these yesterday because I was putting in another melon pit. But I figured since I'm up and moving early today, I may as well get some melon pits planted. We'll get a few different melons going and hopefully we can get a harvest before the winter temperatures hit. As long as we can stay over 40 degrees, we should be able to get some melons off of these. I got a handful of seeds from a farmer's market melon that I really enjoyed. It was nice and ripe, so these seeds should be fully mature. And they're grown in my area, so I'm going to go ahead and plant them. One thing I really like doing with any type of curcubit seed, whether it's a pumpkin or a watermelon or... Uh, cucumber. What I like to do is take a sharp knife and just nick the edge of that seed and it gives the seed some easier access to water. It doesn't take a whole lot. You can see there's not a lot of material removed but that should let the water into that seed a lot easier. So I'm going to do that with this whole handful of seeds and we'll get them planted. I got a dozen or so seeds nicked. I'm just gonna rough up this soil with this cultivating tool. And then I'm gonna poke the seeds down in just a little ways into the soil here. Once I get these in, I might tamp the soil surface down just a tiny bit to get some better soil contact. But that's the gist of it. If you put more seeds you have more of a genetic lottery going on, so to speak. And whatever sprouts the quickest and looks the most vigorous, you can keep those, I don't know, two or three vines. The rest of it, I just cut it down, sort of use it as mulch. The soil's still nice and damp from yesterday. Even if there's nothing in these melon pits, I like to give them a water just to keep all the biological action going. 
and then it makes planting a little bit easier too. But that's it. That's a melon pit planted. And hopefully, that's a few melons coming into the house before the 40 degree nights start hitting. After I tamp it down and get some good soil contact, I do like to come back and run my hand over it, rough up the surface just a little bit because that breaks up the capillary action. If you don't, you're drawing up more moisture from underneath. Kind of acts as a dust mulch. Not necessary, but when you're as dry and hot as we are here in my area, every little bit counts. If this doesn't produce any melons, one thing I can do is I can just cut those back, bury them in the top little section of this hill. I don't have to dig all the way down to the fish and then I can put them back in the soil and they'll make more humus more compost nothing will be lost if we don't have any harvest I'll get as many of those melon pits planted as I can before I go to work but first and foremost I want to give one more thank you to David the Good I would highly recommend buying this compost everything book it's compost everything the good guide to extreme composting and it has a lot of different methods that you can use some are more extreme than I would go to but there's a lot of really good information in there and it kind of demystifies the whole process it makes you realize you don't have to be so scientific and perfect with all of it if you're making good compost good humus for the soil your soil is going to benefit I hope you enjoyed the video I really hope that you plant some melon pits, and I definitely enjoyed getting some seeds in the ground, getting a little dirt under my nails. I'll see you in the next one.